Remember a few months ago when I got the upscaled, action figure ready Battlestar Galactica Colonial Viper based on the Mattel original, but actually able to hold the Mattel action figures from back in 1978? I never would have imagined that there would have been another spaceship from that lineup to get the royal treatment. Report, Centurion, on the final assault. Robert has done it again. The same guy that brought us the upscaled Colonial Viper has done it with the Cylon Raider. And it is something I never even thought or conceived would be possible. I don't know why. I just assumed that, you know, this was going to be the one ship that would get made. And when I received the Viper, of course, as you saw in the original video, I was thrilled. And in the back of my mind, you know, I thought about the Cylon Raider and then I thought about the dual wings coming out and the dual missile launchers and the fact that the Cylon Warrior, uh, you know, doesn't have movable legs. And I thought, well, that's probably a pipe dream, you know, that, that's probably not even possible. It's going to be so much bigger. It's going to involve so much more engineering, different colors of plastic and all that kind of stuff. Well, that didn't stop Robert. Man's genius. And he just turned around and, you know, whipped up his Willy Wonka magic. And here it is. I mean, the Battlestar Galactica Mattel Cylon Raider has been blown up. It is now three and three quarter inch figure scale. And just like the Viper, it does everything it did when we were kids. I, I, it actually has the opening wings with the dual missile launchers. And he's given us a choice between red missiles and yellow missiles. And you get both of them with the ship, which is awesome. I think the yellow missiles, they were either on the prototype photos on the Mattel toy catalog, I believe. And then when the toy actually shipped, they were red. I think it was something like that. Uh, but Robert decided to just give us both options. And it really differentiates the Cylon Raider from the Viper by having the yellow missiles installed. They shoot just like the Viper uh, missile launcher shoots. I mean, I'll just shoot one off right now. Holy cow, did you see that? I, 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 I'm blown away. I'm blown away because as I said many times, I was never going to really hunt feverishly for those Mattel vehicles. I have some of the figures because they're three and three quarter inch scale and they display nicely next to the Buck Rogers figures and the Star Trek figures. But I was never gonna go hunting for the Battlestar Galactica ships and vehicles because they were too small. And Robert just rode right on around that, like it didn't even matter. And he's made these available and I, I couldn't be more thrilled. I mean, heavy construction on this thing, heavy construction. Now you might be saying, that's great, but what does that mean for a pilot? Do you have to use Baltar all the time? Because the Cylon's legs do not move on the action figure. This action figure's legs, they always drop their rifles. This action figure's legs, aside from a waist swivel, are permanently sculpted in one pose. Well, how is this possible? This is possible because Robert decided, I'm just going to sculpt new legs for the Cylon Warrior. He's like, I don't even care. I do what I want. And he sculpted three and three quarter inch scale, correct to the style of the Mattel figures, but movable at the waist as the other figures do, the five POA style legs for the Cylon. And you might think, well, what kind of surgery do I have to do? to get the legs on there. You don't. I was shocked too. I asked Robert about that and he said, nope, you just kind of go and the torso comes right off the legs, not broken. You're not breaking the legs when you do that. They just literally go, they just pop right off. The legs are intact. I have them, you know, over in the studio and, and in the display room and they're totally fine. 
And then you just take these and you twist them on like the cap of a bottle, just pop and they pop right in. And now you've got a Cylon Warrior that can fit inside your Cylon Raider. Done. I know that there are still people out there who see this kind of stuff as repro and all they want is the officially licensed stuff. But at what point do you move over into the lane of, I wanna collect what's quality and I wanna collect what brings enjoyment. Now, if that kind of stuff, if that kind of OCD nitpicking brings you enjoyment, fine. But for me, this is about lifelong redemptions in some cases, you know, with the Viper and the Cylon Raider, this is, this is about, you know, uh, potential not realized. And, and finally it's realized by the fans. The fans are doing the best work. And if you don't see that in this duo of vehicles, I don't know what to tell you. I really don't. Uh, I've, I've gotten some feedback uh, from people when I released the Viper video and they were talking about processes that can be used to make the 3D printed exterior look even more like smooth manufactured plastics and things like that. The reason that I'm not showing you those processes in these videos um, and nor have I done them to these these vehicles is one, I think they look great just the way they are. Um, and everybody has different levels of OCD about that kind of thing. But I also have an obligation to show you guys what they look like right out of the box. I mean, this is what it's gonna look like when you receive it. And I think they look fabulous. I mean, I think they, uh, this, this Raider just looks awesome. I don't have any qualms about it. Knowing that it's from an independent operation, like just a guy who's passionate about Battlestar Galactica and late 70s sci-fi, knowing, knowing that the quality comes out like this, unbelievable work, unbelievable work, unbelievable. And then the fact that it's just, you know, beautifully like weighted, you know, it doesn't have any locking features on the wings. The wings just are friction fit, you know, and they come out the canopy just, you know, it's just like, it's just like the, the Mattel one, except bigger. It's just like the Mattel in every way, except it's the right size. Finally. I mean, this thing is, it's just, you have to you have to hold it in your hands to feel the quality of the materials. I mean, it's it's really it's really heavy and and in a good way. Every detail is sculpted on it. Every single detail, even in the cockpit and the armrests, is there. Just scaled up. The stickers are already on it when you get it. You can't ask for better than that especially when the, the big toy companies aren't giving us anything like what we want. They're not even doing vehicles anymore. I, I've said it a million times and I stand by it. If you're so into just what the companies made available at the time or now, more power to you, I guess, but get out of, get out of our way because we're trying to have some fun with the experience of these collectibles and we are tapping into something. I, I don't know how to describe it. We're tapping into something actually from childhood that's not material that then leads to material. I don't know if that makes sense. So let me try to explain it a different way. We're tapping into those things that were just outside of camera range, those things that were just out of reach that we always dreamed of to bring into the toy collection with everything else. And that to me is going to be infinitely more interesting than buying the 50th Bespin Luke or, you know, the 70th subtle variation of Chewbacca. Everybody gets to collect the way they want. I'm certainly not stopping anybody else from, from collecting the way they want, but these kind of 
fan-made efforts, they, they get me excited and enthusiastic more than anything else out there right now. And it's because they're actually tapping into what we as customers want. This is the kind of stuff that they should be aiming at adult collectors. And, and, and then by extension, they should be redesigning, you know, the toys on the toy aisle for, you know, kid centric play, you know, get back to appealing to kids. You know, you've, you've been chasing the adults too long, guys. You've got to appeal to, to kids. And if you want to appeal to an adult, which I believe goes hand in hand with appealing to a kid, and that's where they've messed up. You gotta, you gotta find these lost gems. You gotta, you gotta look at these opportunities. You know that that uh, Forbidden Planet robot sold out across Walmart. That that Robbie the robot, from what I heard, I I only saw them in pictures. I never saw them at Walmart. I wasn't gonna buy one. But you think about that, a sci-fi movie toy based on something from the '50s sold out at Walmarts across America. And I know the production volumes were probably a little lower, but it doesn't matter, it sold out. Um, this could sell out too, but they're not gonna do it. So the fans have to do it. And I'm actually grateful that the fans are the ones doing it because they got the love that they put into it, the care, the attention to detail, the attention to quality. A fan knows, like a fan, they know how beefy they want a canopy hinge joint to be because they had enough of them break on them when they were kids. They know how tough and rugged with the tolerances they want these wings to be. And Robert, he gets it as close as he can with the tools available to him and he does a bang up job. And just so you're aware, this was not something that was sent to me as a freebie. Okay, I bought that Viper and I bought this Cylon Raider. I bought that Viper on spec. Like I bought it, you know, like anybody else, just I'm taking a chance on this and we're gonna see what happens. Just like I pre-ordered that Bantha and just like I bought from Pro Customs Figures and bought from Stan Solo. And I bought this Cylon Raider. And, and Robert has told us all that this isn't the last vehicle coming, which, thrills me to no end. It's like, what's next? Um, and then and then just having the option for a Cylon warrior to have the right legs. I mean, these legs are solid. I mean, look, they, they hold position. They, guys, this this is it right here. This is this is our future and I'm loving it. Uh, I, I, I am absolutely enthralled with with this this effort and the the level of quality that has gone into this this project um i couldn't be more thrilled and now that i have this duo i really want to make sure that i get proper display space for them because i want people to see these when they they come to the retro blasting studio these are just they're just beautiful so i am looking forward to robert's next vehicle for sure whatever that is I'm looking forward to some other fan-made projects that I have on order. Can't wait to see those. The link to go look at these vehicles, if you're interested, is in the description below. So thanks for watching this, guys, and we will see you on the next video. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to see more Battlestar Galactica videos, you can see my review of the upscaled Viper here. And if you just want to see more fan custom projects, you can click our Fans Are Doing the Best Work playlist here. So now I'm going to run out the time by playing with this Colonial Viper and Cylon Raider.